I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks, and today we're making carrot cake with a cream cheese frosting. I want to take a moment here to remind you to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And as always, the recipe's in the description down below. You might ask why I chose carrot cake to be the first cake I did on my channel. And there's a couple of reasons. First of all, it's easy to make. Uh, and it's basically just dumping everything into a, a bowl, mixing it together and baking it, right? Uh, and I like easy because I'm not a baker. You know, I'm a chef, but I do like to bake. Uh, and it's delicious. It's a delicious cake. The other reason is every year uh, my, my birthday starts to roll around, I start to think of carrot cake. Because when I was a kid, uh, my dad used to threaten us if we were bad that we would get carrot cake for our birthday. And as kids, we were like, oh my God, no, anything but that. Uh, and you know, he never came through on that, that threat or promise because he knew it was delicious. So that's the other reason why I chose to do this on my channel. Let's talk about the ingredients for the cake and then the frosting. So for the cake, I need uh, all-purpose flour, sugar, crushed pineapple, carrots that I'm gonna grate, vanilla, some coconut oil, orange zest, baking soda, baking powder, cinnamon, nutmeg, and Chinese five spice powder, eggs, and a little bit of salt. For the frosting, we need some confectioner's sugar or powdered sugar, butter, cream cheese, a pinch of salt, and uh, some vanilla extract. So whenever I bake a cake, I have kind of like this process, and I think most pastry chefs or chefs do it this way. I'll mix my dry ingredients, and then I'll mix my wet ingredients. We'll combine the wet and dry, and then we bake our cake. Let's mix all our dry ingredients. This is super easy. Uh, All-purpose flour. Everything just goes into the bowl, the sugar, right? Usually with cakes, you cream the sugar with the butter, but that doesn't have to happen with this cake, and that's why I love it. Flour, sugar, baking soda, baking powder, a half a teaspoon of salt. Salt's important in these things because salt's a flavor enhancer. You need that. Nutmeg, I have cinnamon. And then my last spice ingredient, I'm using Chinese five spice. I think it just adds a little something kind of mysterious to this cake, but not so much that it's like off and weird. It just adds kind of a little different flavor. It makes it my version. So Chinese five spice. Usually there's cloves and there's ginger and stuff like that in here, uh, but I like the five spice. I get a whisk and I'm gonna make sure there's no lumps. Sometimes the nutmeg makes lumps. And that's it, let's set our dry stuff aside. All right, let's grate the carrots, and I have a very specific way that I grate, I grate things. Um, I, I tell my students it's the grating gospel. So I'm gonna take my uh, tops and bottoms off my carrots, and then I'm gonna peel. And I always find that if I take the tops and the bottoms off, um, I basically just start at the top, finish the bottom, and I don't have to do anything else to them. Super quick, and then we grate. Whenever I grate cheese, carrots, or whatever, I always try and put it into a flat container. I try not to do it on my board because it makes a mess on my board, and then I push. I lay it on its side, and I push. This way, there's a lot of muscles at work, and not that I'm lazy, it's just that I'm always looking for a more efficient way to do it. So whenever I grate, I try and grate on its side. Makes a little bit of a mess, you get it everywhere. It's okay. I have a great cleaning person. Me. Let's mix the wet ingredients. I put my carrots in. Uh, and of course, I'm gonna have all the measurements and the recipe in the description. Um, the carrots and the pineapple, right, go in together. And I use my pineapple uh, pureed or crushed. You just don't want big chunks of pineapple in here. Uh, and what the pineapple and carrots do is they're gonna add moisture to the cake and they add a little bit of sweetness, okay? Um, I'm gonna add my eggs. I'm using coconut oil. Using coconut oil gives us a really nice flavor and a really nice texture to our cake. A little bit of vanilla, I'm not gonna measure it. I'm just gonna kinda do a little bit, a touch of vanilla in there. And then I'm gonna use uh, half of an orange zest with my microplane. Just the zest. We don't wanna get any into the pith. We just wanna get a little bit of that zest and that oil in there, about a half an orange. And all we gotta do is mix this up really well. And before we combine this with our dry ingredients, we're gonna prepare our pans, right? Uh, we wanna get the pans ready uh, before we mix the wet and dry, so that's the next thing we're gonna do. 
I Pan should be prepared before you mix wet and dry ingredients, right? Because once you mix those wet and dry ingredients, the baking powder and baking soda start acting, right? And you're getting bubbles. If you mix that batter way too far ahead before you prepare your pans, you're gonna lose a lot of that kind of airiness and lightness on your cake. This is how I prepare my pans. I have a jumbo container of grease. Not, it's not grease, it's, it's Crisco. Uh, I buy the store brand because this jumbo container lasts me a long time um, and I just use it for greasing pans. Uh, and I just make sure that I have my towel, I get into the corners really well, and I oil it all the way up to the top. The next thing I wanna do is make parchment circles for the bottom of my pans. And basically parchment is just a nonstick paper that allows our cake to release really easy. It is a must as far as I'm concerned. I think that it's the best way to do this. Some people will flour these, but everyone's had those cakes that stick to the bottom of the pan and this will make sure your cake doesn't stick. And this is what I do. I basically get a piece the size of my pan. Make sure you get your scissors. You don't have to be too neat about it. I'm gonna cut two pieces the size of my pan. I always tell my students, oh, we're gonna do arts and crafts today. Arts and crafts with Chef Frank. And then what I do is I take my parchment, fold it this way, and I try and get nice creases. Um, and in the culinary world, uh, you know, this is a parchment circle, and when we use it in co cooking food, it's called a cartouche. So we fold it in half, in half again, and then I'm just keep on, I hold my finger on the point where all the folded edges are, and the folded edges fold towards the folded edges, not the open edges, right? So we fold it, and we keep folding the folded edges into each other until we get a nice kind of aeroplane, right? Once we get this aeroplane, right, we get our pan, and I'm gonna hold it so that the point of it is in the middle of the, the baking pan. And then I'm gonna cut it right where my thumb is, right? And what this does is it gives us a wonderful circle. Right, this circle goes down on the bottom, fits in our pan, and this is gonna make sure our cake does not stick. Okay, time to put the wet and dry together, and that, this is what I love about this cake, is you just kinda just dump the wet into the dry. Um, I'm gonna mix this, but we wanna be careful not to overmix. We wanna make sure that the um, wet and dry are completely combined, no floury lumps, make sure we get all the lumps out, and that's it, we wanna mix it really quick. I have my prepared pans here, and I'm just gonna split the batter by eye. You can always do this by weight if you want, um, but I try and get them as even as possible just by watching it, looking at it. Get everything out. I like to use a rubber spatula for this. Uh, I'm careful not to like beat the air out of this. I'm just gonna kinda lightly spread it around. You can also see, if you look, that the, the baking powder and baking soda are starting to work. You can see bubbles in there, right? And now we're gonna throw this in the oven. While our cakes are in the oven, I'm gonna make our frosting. And it's a simple cream cheese frosting. It's not complicated, it's really easy. I have a mixer. If you don't have a mixer, you can do this by hand. If you have one of those handheld mixers, or you can just kind of whip this with a spoon or a rubber spatula, it's fine. But what's most important about this is that my butter and my cream cheese are both room temperature. I'm going to add a pinch of salt. Remember, salt's a flavor enhancer. I'm gonna put a little bit of vanilla extract in. And again, I'm just eyeballing it because I'm a chef. And then we're gonna put it on my mixer. I like to use a paddle attachment and I'm gonna kind of whip this together so that it's all together and homogenous. Go for about 30 seconds and then I'm gonna scrape my bowl down. And then I'm gonna put all my sugar in at once. Confectioner's sugar goes in at once. Be really careful at this point when you turn your machine back on because if you turn it on really high speed, you get a super big cloud of, of sugar in your face. So I just kind of pulse it a little, turn the power on slowly until I see this combining and then I let it go. And then once I see that it's combined, I let it whip. I stop for a sec, there's some sugar on the sides, there's some butter on the sides, I scrape down and let it go. Now I'm just gonna let this go for about three or four minutes until it's nice and smooth and creamy and we're pretty much done. All right, that's whipped really nice. 
nice and airy, nice and fluffy. Look at that, beautiful. So I just leave this in the bowl until I'm ready to frost. Oh, wait a sec, you know what I should do? I found my tasting spoon. <laughs> I found my Star Wars tasting spoon. Oh, good. Cakes are done. How did I determine that? I get a skewer. You can use a metal skewer or a bamboo skewer. I stick it in the center, and if it comes out clean, the cakes are done. They have a beautiful golden brown top. I'm gonna leave them in the pans for three or four minutes. Uh, the cakes are gonna shrink a little, pull away from the sides, and then we'll flip them out. Cakes have been cooling for about three or four minutes. All I'm gonna do is turn these out now. I'm gonna take my rack, flip it out. Now, if I did it right, if the cake should just pop right out. Okay, right, good. Uh, at this point, I'm gonna just take off my parchment that goes in the trash and my cake pops right out. Now what I'm gonna do is let them cool completely. They're still really warm. The last thing you wanna do is frost a cake or put frosting on a cake when it's warm. All right, the cakes are completely cool. I am going to take them off of the rack. I have a nice big plate. They come right off the rack. So half of the frosting is going to go in the middle. Okay. Just get a spatula. I'm just going to turn this and work it to the edges. I'm not going to let it go over the edge. Just work it to the edge. Right. And then I have my other cake. Plop it right on top, squeeze just, and then get the rest of my frosting right on top. I find that the reason I don't do the sides for this is not so much that I don't, I'm, I'm kind of lazy. It's more of that this is a very sticky, it's not like a buttercream, it's not smooth. It's like super sticky. And I really just want to have a nice top. I think I could put a little more on there. Okay. And look at that. Carrot cake. Done. That's my carrot cake. Isn't it gorgeous? Let me get a fork and a knife and taste it. All right, the moment of truth. Let's take a slice and taste it. Nice and tender. I can feel it. Look at that. Beautiful. Plenty of cream cheese frosting, mm, okay. Look at that slice. Just give it a taste. It is wonderful. The cake is super moist, the frosting is creamy. That five spice in orange gives it a little bit of a twist. It's absolutely delicious. You gotta try it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. We have merch in the description down below, Need Salt t-shirts and all those sort of things. Um, I wanna thank my patrons at Patreon for helping us out and your support, thank you. We have a P.O. box in the description down below. The recipe's in the description down below. And that's it, that's my carrot cake. I hope you enjoyed this, have a good one.